tonight on 8 out of 10 cats. He's got the X Factor. It's Louis Wong. Slick Nick. It's Nick Helm. And their team captain, John Richardson. And facing them tonight, ready, set, show. It's Joe Brand. From Rizzle Kicks, it's Jordan Stevens. And their team captain, Sean on lock. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats Uncut, a show all about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, students have to apply for an average of 24 jobs before they find a position? Things are tough out there. I met a guy recently who told me he had a first with honours, an MA and a PhD. I said, that's great, but I asked you for a burger without pickle. <laughs> 72% of people find spending time with animals relaxing. I like having dogs around, but my girlfriend objects to all the licking of balls and sniffing of bums. She says it upsets the dogs. <laughs> and 40% of men worry about getting fat. There's a simple test for men. Look down at your stomach. If it's flat, you've got nothing to worry about. If it's sticking out a bit, you might need to go on a diet. And if you can't see your stomach because your boobs are getting in the way, you've got a problem. <laughs> right, let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our palace job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. John's team, what do you think the nation should be talking about this week? I presume people are talking about X Factor. Of course. Probably talking about whoever was voted out last week. Who, who was voted out last week? Wasn't it Abby last week? Abby, uh, yeah. Now, did you think she was any good? I thought she was OK. Just OK. <laughs> kind of boring. <laughs> I didn't think she should have done the show. You don't no. think she should have done it? I didn't. It? I said at the first audition, I don't think you're right for the show. What do you think she should have done? Just made you a cup of tea and fucked up? I think she's like a singer. <laughs> no! I think she's like a singer songwriter. I just didn't think she was versatile enough. So, who's your star act this year? Well, I've got three left. You've got three? That's I've incredible. Got three, yeah. Haven't got Paul Akista left, though, have you, Louis? No. <laughs> no, but you know what? No, he's coming down. He's coming back <laughs> next year. Talk to me. I, I've, I've lost all respect for you. Why? <laughs> because he's good, isn't he? He's You're really telling me I'm the best voice he's in the really thing. He's really good. I want him to come back next year. He, he was, was in it guest. this year. He was down with me the weekend. That's what you say to someone who's late. He That's came what the to Royal see me the weekend. Say. I looked after him the weekend. I showed him what he should do next year. What do you mean you looked after him at the weekend? <laughs> he, he came down to the show. <laughs> and I showed him <laughs> what really happened. <laughs> He's a great singer, yeah, great singer. Well, he's, speaking of great singers, let's have a clip of uh, one of your other performers okay. this year. Okay. Sam Callahan, what an okay. amazing okay. voice. Okay. <laughs> How lucky can one guy be? I kiss them, she kiss me. Like a fella once said, ain't that a kick in the head? Tell me quick, ain't that a kick in the head? <laughs> That was amazing. You're like a little Fred Astaire. No. <laughs> no, I, I'm with you. I agree with you. He is like Fred Astaire. Yeah. Fred Astaire couldn't sing either, could he? <laughs> <laughs> he was an entertainer. So do you think he can sing? Do you think he's... Yeah. Yeah, he's quite good. <laughs> <laughs> can I ask you a question, Louis? Like, yeah. this genuinely intrigues me. You say he can actually sing. Yeah. <clears throat> why do you... Why every series of X Factor do you always do this? Like, you, like, you, you, like you're always, you're, it's always you who picks the person who's, like, not actually good at singing. And but, it's just enter it's, <laughs> it's entertaining. No, 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 no. Just, just out of <laughs> interest. Out of pure interest. <laughs> but he's still in the competition. Yeah, he's in Obviously, the competition. So right, so this is my question to you, though, right? It's a popularity contest. If it's a si right, so it's not a singing competition. It's a popularity, it's a popularity it's a personality, it's everything. I'll be honest with you, no one has ever taken the X Factor as seriously as you just have. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Jimmy, you know what? There's lots of people in the charts that cannot sing. Come on, let's name names. I'm Who? not naming them, but Come there's on, a lot of them. Names. No, 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 no. <laughs> Britney. <laughs> there's lots of people in the Britney charts. Britney is a triumph you know, of auto tune. She, but she's yeah. not a great singer, you know. That's the one guy on tour. Stars don't upset. They don't upset the auto tune guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They talk to the rest of the crew. They treat him like scum. But the auto tune guy, yeah. they go, "How are you? Did you sleep well?" Because <laughs> he could just go like that, and they just go. <laughs> 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 OK, let's treat ourselves to... This is the uh, Bulgarian uh, music idol. Uh, this lady is... She's Bulgarian. She's singing in English. 
there's a lesson here, I think, for all people auditioning for X Factor, that you've got to really know the lyrics to the song. No one can to get to save me. No young clist the show my leave. Where I guess the shows the button and let you more. You want us to night, Molly night, your sort of show. Yes, he show. It's making a song your own. Yeah, technically. <laughs> your own language. What did you think of that professional opinion? I thought it was really funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you'd definitely put that through, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joe, do you watch X Factor? I, I'm afraid I don't watch X Factor, but I do know enough to know. I don't know. There's a, like a very beautiful woman on the panel. I think her name's Nicole Shitsinger. <laughs> Nicole. Shirtsinger. Shirtsinger. If she wasn't allowed to say, you made that song your own and you nailed it. She would be quiet for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> she should do a bit of poetry by Keats or something. Just to, <laughs> to vary it a bit. Nick, would you think you're giving it a go? You can sing. I can sing. I can sing very well. Um, but I've self-produced, right? <laughs> got my little album here, right? Um, I got you one for your wife and kids. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So what, sorry, what's your album called? Hot my and album heavy. is called Hot and Heavy. <laughs> Hot and Heavy. <laughs> it used to be my dream, right, to have a number one record, right? It used to be my dream, and now my dream <laughs> is to just sell enough so that I've got enough floor space so I can get to my wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a look and see if X Factor is up there. <laughs> yes, the X Factor live finals continue. The big news on X Factor is Louis this series, you've not had any of your boys in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it's an incredible achievement. <laughs> Sean's team. What yes. have the nation been talking about this oh, week? Right, what do you yeah. think, Joe? Oh, possibly Miley Cyrus smoking a joint somewhere. Yes, Miley Cyrus allegedly smoked a joint at the MTV Music Awards. There she yeah. is with the herbal cigarette. <laughs> is she going swimming straight after that? <laughs> Jordan, what did you think of it? You're, you're a pop star. Well, she came out in the news recently and said um, she's not being um, exploited. She's actually in complete control of what she's doing and she's the world's biggest feminist. <laughs> can, I just, can I just say, I literally am the biggest feminist. <laughs> So if Miley wants to come and see me, she can. Would you put a flea in her ear? I bloody well would. Put <laughs> a fucking fist in her ear. <laughs> what I like about her, slightly like about her, is she's kind of getting it slightly wrong. You know, because normally people are they, they, they're overtly sexual, they try and be really cool. Yeah, that's what I was... And she sort of does it slight. I think she sort of is making these decisions, because I'm sure the, the record executives wouldn't be keen on the whole dwarf thing. Like, she goes, <laughs> she goes on stage with loads of dwarves, and they probably think, that's not actually... It's a bit just weird, and it's a bit it's uncool. I mean, she's, about, she's literally a whisker away from lighting her own fart. <laughs> <as far as I'm laughs> She sort of is in charge of what she's doing. And she hasn't she's got quite a bit nailed mad. what sexy is. I think the problem with Miley Cyrus is that, uh, that because she was a Disney child, yeah. uh, it's so much more tragic, everyone thinks, that Disney gone bad, you know, like Definitely. Britney Spears. And it, it's sort of <laughs> like Dumbo shagging Bambi or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Disney gone nightmare. <laughs> you put that in my head. <laughs> you just ruined my childhood. <laughs> I watched the footage of her at the EMAs and I was shocked because how in the name of Sweet Bell Peppers she's won an award for music. Yes. Why is no one talking about that? The award winners at that thing were Justin Bieber, her and One Direction. Why is nobody reporting the fact that music is dead? <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Miley is up there. <laughs> 
Yes, Miley Cyrus caused controversy, allegedly smoking marijuana on stage at the MTV Music Awards. Although I saw the footage of Miley and I think I could see a better crack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John C, what else have the nation been talking about? The, the Star Wars open auditions in Bristol. This is huge news, isn't it? Brilliant. It's funny that they queued up for about eight hours in the freezing rain. <laughs> Over 4,000 people turned up to the auditions in Bristol and about 1,500 were turned away without even being seen. Without even being seen, that's yeah. harsh, isn't it? Just... <laughs> <laughs> Louis, you do these open auditions, how quickly do you know, like when you're auditioning people, how quickly do you know, well, they're clearly not going to get it, how long do you give them? Well, we, we see a few hundred people a day. I mean, we, we let them sing maybe one song, if they're good. You know, if they're really bad, we might get two songs. <laughs> Jordan, have you ever auditioned? Have you gone up for an audition? Uh, actually, yeah, I got to the last five to be Will Smith's son when I was, like, nine. I tell you, I tell you, you got the part, <laughs> his son. <laughs> I, I went for that thing for Will Smith's son as well. <laughs> <laughs> I got down to the last two. <laughs> <laughs> She's a very versatile actress. <laughs> I, did, I didn't need to go to the auditions because I've already got a part in the new Star Wars film. Have you? Yeah, I've already been cast. I play the postman on the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> Insufferably cheery postman. <laughs> walking around the Death Star going... <laughs> <laughs> May the parcel force be with you. <laughs> the thing about Darth Vader, I've never understood about Darth Vader, is why hasn't he got rickets? <laughs> Tell me more. costume on all the time, his skin would never ever see any sunlight. So really, he should have rickets. He should, instead of walking around like this, magisterially like this, like this, he should walk around like this. <laughs> it's difficult to know how they could have made Darth Vader any scarier. That walk is it. The thing is, this, the new trilogy has got to be really good because the first trilogy was really good and then the prequel trilogy was awful and it undid all of the good work of the original trilogy and then the third trilogy has got to be not just good but even better to make up for the prequel trilogy. And it's a bit like uh, going out on a date and it's great, and you know, you go to Pizza Express and up the London Eye, and that's brilliant. And on the second date, you know, you've waiting, been waited in the rain for two and a half hours, right? And she shows up with a friend for protection, right? <laughs> and at the end of the night, at the end of the night, you're both crying and there's shit in the bed, right? <laughs> and so on the third date, you know, you're gonna need scented candles, right? And fucking foot rubs, Carol, right? Because you will not walk all over me! You will not do that! <laughs> well, listen, what they've done now is they've said that because so many people turn up to these open auditions, they're going to allow people to audition on video and you can just send in your audition tape. Oh. John, Sean, do you want to...? Yeah, I'll do it, yeah. yeah OK, fine. Well, I don't what... need to, I've already got a part, but... <laughs> well, what, you'll be I'm such give, a versatile if I give you, actor, if I, I give can you that see me. Part, if I give Sean that one, you could be, you could be Vader, you could be Luke, just... Right. Classic lines, you just gotta <laughs> embody the role. Oh, uh, okay. All right, action. If only you knew the power <laughs> of, <laughs> of the dark side. <laughs> Obi Wan never told you what happened to your father. <laughs> he told me enough, he told me you killed him. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> the second no is not in the script. But I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your father! Shuffy <laughs> now, that's never eat! That is in the script. <laughs> no, that's not true, that's impossible! <laughs> Say it's your feelings, you know it to be true! <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> See you. It's, um... Wow. Is... Well, let's have a look and see if Star Wars auditions are up there. <laughs> yes, open auditions have been held in Bristol for the new Star Wars film. Of course, the original Star Wars film was the story of a boy who didn't know who his real father was and fell in love with his sister. So Bristol was the perfect place. <laughs> Sean Steen. Wow.
I think everyone's just overjoyed about Prince Charles's birthday. Yay! <laughs> and I'd like to uh, do him a special birthday message. <laughs> Please do. Happy birthday, sir. That's it. That's it. <laughs> well, Prince Charles is 65. He's, yeah. he's of retirement age now. Jimmy, he looks older. He well, looks older talk. than 65. <laughs> But no, he does. Seriously, I thought he was more. He, do, he does look kind of... He looks, he looks like older. He's, yeah, he does look older. John, do you, what do you think? He I think older. the stress of waiting for your mother to die will do that to a face. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, what, what do you think of Prince Charles? He's 65. Um, have you met him? I, I think I have. <laughs> you think you have? Some people have met him, some people haven't, but there's very few in your category of... <laughs> you think I might have. I think, like, I feel like I, I, I could have met him because I've done some stuff in life that might have led me there. But every time I see pictures of him, he's got really fat fingers. Like, he's got really fat sausage fingers. <laughs> and I think if I met him, I would have remembered the handshake. <laughs> Maybe he secretly goes to your gigs. You know how Princess Diana used to secretly go out and, in, yeah. and, yeah. and visit places? Maybe he secretly... What well, goes um, to Rizzle Kick shows? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that'd be cool, though. Maybe, Prince Harry, you know, I saw Prince Harry. Maybe he's out there in the crowd, and then you notice his fat fingers <laughs> in the crowd. <laughs> Camilla described Charles as, as difficult to buy for. John, what would you get Charles as a present? Uh, I don't think I'll get him anything. There are people who are buying him gifts. Like, I imagine he'll get a hundred hampers. <laughs> people will just send him reams of shit that he'll never even know exists. <laughs> I get uh, an email from Papa John's on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> And even they don't offer me a free pizza, they might offer me a 1.25 litre Diet Coke. <laughs> There'll be presents in his house now that he will not know exists. Some little old lady will have knitted him a little Prince Charles's knitwork face. <laughs> and there'll be someone at home going, oh, Charles, all your gifts arrive, and he'll just go, burn them. <laughs> <laughs> the, thing about, the thing for me about Prince Charles is, is, is the medals. It's the uniforms and the medals. Like, yeah. Harry and William actually did serve in the military, and uh, Harry was in, a, you know, what they call a theatre of war. <laughs> um, and Prince Charles, you think, has he, how has he got the nerve to wear all those medals all the time? You know, I mean, he's on, you know, they're, they're all on the balcony in a, in a line, and he's there with his medals. Do you think the Queen ever just goes, have you, have you got any shame, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> he might as well. He might as well just dress up as Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> 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 as much. It means as much. He just says to go to infinity and beyond. <laughs> well, the other thing that annoys me about them is the idea that they work. Apparently, Camilla said he's a workaholic. Oh, yeah. And you think, well, that's what really annoys me about the royals is, yes, you've got all this, this privilege, these castles, all this great deal of wealth, but don't rub, it in our, rub our noses in it and say you work really hard as well. Because <laughs> they don't. He hasn't got a sticker in the back of his limo saying no tools left in the vehicle <laughs> overnight. <laughs> I feel like if we didn't have a royal family, there's risk that half the world just won't care about us anymore. Do you not ever feel that? Hey, we still got the rizzle kicks. Relax. <laughs> I just think it gives us an identity. Like, can you know, you can associate us. Everyone's like, oh, Britain, the Queen. I know, but unfortunately, it's an identity of a load of inbred wankers. <laughs> 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 I can tell you it's not one of the most talked about things this week, but Prince Charles turns 65. At Charles's age, most people are thinking about putting their feet up and doing nothing. But he fancies a change. <laughs> uh, figures on buzzers, two more things still to get. What do you think? The price rises, electricity price rises. Yeah, electricity, yeah. They said another 17 years of continual price rises. I don't know why that'll stop. Eventually, we're, they're planning a war, they're not something. <laughs> I'm a bit worried because in 70 years' time I'm going to be in my early 40s and <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of quite worried about how I'll cope. Mm. Well, do you try and keep your fuel bills down, Sean? What do you what do? You do? Um, well, I've been on tour. Still dates and uh, tickets available. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I haven't been at home a lot. Actually, asking me that question, asking me, OK, everyone in my family's got a onesie now except me. Why haven't you got a onesie? I... I, 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 I I just can't choose an animal I feel comfortable in. <laughs> <laughs> a bear! A bear! You're so clearly a bear! Oh, yeah, You're a little bit grumpy sometimes, but adorable. You're a bear. to be a bear. Another one says, you'd be a very good tiger. My son says, oh, I might just be a lion. And they don't do turtle. <laughs> Crow. 
That's a bit crazy. I'm not happy with, uh, with, with the options out there at the moment. Have you, you got a onesie? Do you wear a onesie at home? Is that how you keep me? Your, yeah. Yeah. I, I've got like, quite a collection of animal onesies, actually. Come on and look if you want. You can try <laughs> some. <laughs> Nick, how do you keep your energy bills down? Um, I got my heat and cut off one year. That's a great way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and by that, I mean the man that I used to cuddle at night moved out of our squat. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's have a look and see if it's up there. <laughs> well, there's one more thing to get fingers on buzzers. What do you think? The government have launched a scheme uh, for new mothers where if they breastfeed for six months, they get given some shopping vouchers. Is that brilliant in the, scheme. That's in the news, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But how do we check? How do we know what they're doing? How do it, we check? Yeah. Well, I'm happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Finally, my how boob inspector T-shirt will have a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but how, how could they check, Joe? What would they...? Well, they can't, can they? That's why it's ridiculous. <laughs> well, surely if you breastfeed, you are producing milk, whereas if you don't breastfeed, you stop producing milk. Well, you think they could come along and have a squeeze and see if anything <laughs> comes out? The boob inspector. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, ladies. <laughs> you could have, like, a special screen so they don't have to see him, and they just put their nipple through the screen. <laughs> Jimmy stands on the other side. <laughs> I would suggest Sean's idea for a glory hole for boobs is... <laughs> Find one, I'd like to put that forward. Is, is uh, would it be at a service station, Sean? Where would it be? <laughs> Presumably a service station. <laughs> I'm very comfortable with this arrangement. I'm fine with that. I actually got told off in a, in a restaurant for breastfeeding. It wasn't actually my child, but I just... <laughs> <laughs> you know. When the mood takes you, yeah, why exactly. not? <laughs> Because I didn't understand about breastfeeding, because I've never been called upon to do it. This, it's incredible, isn't it? I found out this week that so if the baby cries, the woman naturally lactates, which has taught me I'm not mature enough to have a child, because <laughs> if I knew that information, I would definitely wait until my wife had just had a shower and got dressed and then go... <laughs> uh, seeing as I'm the only one qualified, I feel, on this panel to speak about the vicissitudes of uh, breastfeeding. Um, now, I just want to tell you a little story. Um, a friend of mine uh, who was a midwife went round to visit a woman who's breastfeeding her five-year-old. Mm. And um, she said to this woman, look, I think he is... Uh, he's a little bit old to be breastfed. And this child took his face off his mother's bosom and went, fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if uh, this breastfeeding story is up there. It is. Well, at the end of that round, Sean's team have two points, John's team have three points. So our next round is Pick of the Polls. John, Louis, Nick, pick a question. Uh, let's have the doctor. OK. Uh, this week it was claimed that 40% of A&E patients have nothing wrong with them, so we asked our studio audience, do you think you're a hypochondriac, yes or no? Well, it's difficult to tell, isn't it? If you think you are, but you're waiting to be told, then are you or aren't you? <laughs> I'll tell you what, the, the test is actually the uh, Whiteley Index for hypochondriacs, OK? So just answer this honestly, we'll see if you're a hypochondriac. Do you worry a lot about your health? No. I've got bigger problems than that, Jimmy. <laughs> Healthy and miserable. <laughs> I'd rather be ill and happy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that you're often aware of various things happening to your body? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you think there's something seriously wrong with your body? <laughs> <laughs> I think other people think there's something seriously wrong with it. I think particularly, women. Particularly the front. Yeah. <laughs> it is. There's a sort of strange uh, swelling at the front. I think I've got a big round... Erection! <laughs> we would have got there, mate. Don't panic. <laughs> Appreciate you being part of the team and all. And... I don't think they're going to spot this knob gag. <laughs> Goes out, there's a knob gag and they haven't seen it. <laughs> this is what I call an emergency. <laughs> we're, we're ruling out the possibility that it's the first one he's ever had and he wants everyone to know about it. <laughs> Action! Action! 
Are you a hypochondriac, Louis? Do you no, 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 no. I don't like hospitals, doctors. I never go to them. I don't even like the smell of hospitals. You don't even like the smell, smell of hospitals? Smell of the hospitals. The rest of us people love do. it. <laughs> no! <laughs> you know what I mean? Enough of that. <laughs> oh, is that Dettol? Mm. <laughs> can, can hypochondriacs be about anything, not just medical? Uh, go on, tell me, what are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we were in RE once. We were doing, given a virtual tour of heaven. Um, RE's and... changed, hasn't it? <laughs> Like, maybe like, sit, like, like, it was just to give an idea of what like a common depiction of heaven is. And then like this, this girl puts her hand up and she went, I saw heaven once. How do you know it was heaven? Well, uh, one time I was sleeping and uh, I saw heaven in my dream and I woke up and my sister said I died for two minutes. <laughs> and, I was, and then like I kind of paused and thought, firstly your sister watches you sleep. <laughs> and then when you die she times you. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got a couple of hypochondriac stories here, just to demonstrate what hypochondriacs are capable of. Uh, one man called for an ambulance as he had shortness of breath. When asked what he thought had caused it, he replied, I'm being chased by the police. <laughs> 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 one woman asked for paramedics to come to her house and bring her washing in as the pathway was too icy for her to walk down. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst one. Uh, Louis? One person called to say they couldn't get through to vote on X Factor, and he asked the 999 operator to call on his behalf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick, are you a hypochondriac? No, I'm the, I, I think I'm the opposite of a hypochondriac. What happened once was I was, I was going on my way to the pub with a group of my mates, and I really fancied this girl, and uh, me and my mate decided to race each other to impress her, right? And I was losing. So I fell over, but I skidded for about seven feet on gravel with my chin. Right? <laughs> and I got up and uh, I was really embarrassed. I was like, come on, let's just go to the pub. Let's just go to the pub. And everyone was like, no, 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 turn around and, and let's see. And I turned around and my face was literally hanging off like that. <laughs> and I was just like, let's go to the pub. Let's go to the pub. This is embarrassing. <laughs> that is the opposite of being a hypochondriac, isn't it? Because I would still rather go to the pub with half my face hanging off than... <laughs> that you were old enough to go to the pub and yet still thought a girl would be impressed by a race. <laughs> OK, let's get some answers on this. We asked our audience, do you think you're a hypochondriac, yes or no? What, what do you think? No. You think no? What are you no. going to go with, Sean? I don't think most people no. are, really. No. no, we'll say no. no. OK. I can tell you it was close, but the answer is no. Only 47% of our audience think they're a hypochondriac. <laughs> Sean Steen, what would you like look of? Uh, David Dimbleby. OK. This week, David Dimbleby got his first ever tattoo at the age of 75. So we asked our studio audience, should people grow old gracefully, yes or no? Uh, no. I don't <laughs> think they should. Is there any obligation to do that? I always think it's amusing, you know, if you go to visit a castle or a stately home, uh, especially in the week, it, ma the majority of the other visitors will be of a certain age, probably over about 65. Snowies, I call them. There'll be a, <laughs> a busload of snowies will turn up. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Louis. Calm down. They'll come off. They'll all come off the... And there's some weird thing that happens to British people when <clears> they've retired, they stop work. They go, you know what? I've worked hard all my life. I'm going to go out and buy myself a beige outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go head to toe. I don't, have to worry. I don't have to worry about a boss anymore. I can dress how I want. I'm going to, I'm going to wear grey shoes with it. <laughs> beige. <laughs> And it's that lack of sort of uh, adventure <laughs> that the old people have in this country. I think the fact someone's having a tattoo, I like them wearing sombreros, grass skirts, you know, coconut bras, just stuff. <laughs> just go out and enjoy yourself. Do what you want. Joan, what do you think? Do you think people should grow old gracefully? I think it was a few years ago, the um, poem that won the nation's favourite poem was that one by Jenny Joseph, When I am old, I shall wear purple, you know. And you yeah. go. Crazy. Crazy, exactly. And I've decided that um, I'm going to be an alcoholic so that when I'm old, I'll be purple. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think it'd be rather nice. I'd Go down the Alex nose. Ferguson route. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> John, what do you think? I mean, you're kind of old before your time. Do you think people should grow old gracefully? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think they should. 
I think, because the other, if you grow old gracefully, you just live forever, and that costs a fortune on the tax. <laughs> so I think when you retire, you should get everything for free for five years, and then if you don't die of overdoses, you have yeah. to pay back. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to live forever being boring? Well, me. Um... <laughs> do, you, do you think you're going to grow old, older? Uh... Older. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, you think? I I don't feel I'm old, Jimmy. Well, I know I am in... old technically, but well, you're in the inside, pop business. inside I'm not. Inside I feel really young. I'm gonna stay on the outside. That's okay. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I super appreciate the offer and everything, <laughs> but. Um... Oh. So you're in the pop business, so that keeps you young anyway, doesn't it? Because yeah, you're, I think you're so, surrounded yeah. by young people. I like what I do. Yeah. Do you think, is there ever an age where you won't have a view anymore? You'll go, well, I'm too old to have an opinion on. I don't know. I really don't know, Jim. What do you think? I, th I think you've no idea now, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, let's get some answers on this. So we asked our studio audience, should people grow old gracefully, yes or no? What do you think, Sean? No. No, they shouldn't. No. John? No, I don't think people should grow old gracefully. Well, I can tell you the answer is no. Only 43% of our audience think you should grow old gracefully. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try and grow old gracefully. And by that I mean in 10 years I'm hoping to be wearing lycra on Strictly rather than eating kangaroo anus on I'm a Celebrity. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here's your question. Best way to impress your friends? What do you think? Oh, is it racing to the pub? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it hasn't been racing anywhere since we were seven years of age. <laughs> because you could have a nasty accident, couldn't you, Jim? <laughs> yes, you could. I don't know if you remember, but that happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. <laughs> Can you do any magic? Can you? No, I can't, but I think if I could, my friends would be impressed. I don't really get magic, because you know they're going to do it, so it just pisses you off, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I can get that ball underneath that cup. You go, I bet you can. So just do it and then shut up. <laughs> the way I like to impress my friends is this... <laughs> no, cos I've got trousers and they, the fly opens up that way. <laughs> it opens up from the bottom. Can you not do that ever again? <laughs> Because most flies open down, mine open up. Yeah. So, because I've got an Australian tailor. <laughs> I think it's be yourself. God, no, have you met you? <laughs> Titty waggles. <laughs> <laughs> Now another titty waggle there, please. Just Will you little... be my friend? Yeah, I want to, I want to be a friend. <laughs> That's a pretty impressive titty waggle. The best way to impress your friends, and it's what I do, is I show them my hole. <laughs> Could you? I mean, that's, that's pretty full this. answer. I mean, oh, I see. Oh, God. I see how you could... No, no, oh. I don't... Just... I've been digging this hole for a long time. I've... <laughs> I've, after the last three years, I do two hours every day digging this hole <laughs> in the back garden, and it's so deep. And I always say, come and have a look at my hole. <laughs> Is it that, Jimmy? That's number Joe. three. Joe, how do you impress your friends? Um, I, I impress my friends by getting up from a chair without any help. <laughs> <laughs> how much noise? Because I've noticed the thing where how much noise do you make when you get up from, from a chair these days? It's quite... Well, if I don't make any noise as well, I get extra points. Yeah, that is, <laughs> that's always the impressive thing. Also, extra points if I don't wet myself. It's quite complicated, <laughs> actually. There's a lot going on. There's yeah, a whole there point is a lot system. going on. And is this going to be a rule at the end of this show? Because at the well, moment, I'm it. in the lead. If you're going to get two extra points for not soiling yourself when you get out of the chair... <laughs> actually, I've done a little poo already. <laughs> <laughs> Best way to impress your friends. Is it act stupid? It's not acting stupid, no. It's, well, I suppose that's the one way you could do this. Being funny. That is the right answer. <laughs> yes, yeah, the best way to impress your friends is to make them laugh. It's a shame for John because he's really funny, but he hasn't got any friends. <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Jordan and Joe have four points, John, Louis and Nick are the winners with six points. <laughs> Thanks to all our...
panelists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Hi, I'm Jimmy Carr, the guy you just saw in that video. Thanks for watching it, because uh, somehow I get money from that. I, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. Thanks for watching it, and somehow that benefits me. And hopefully I'll see a live show at some point further down the sunny road. Good luck.